I'll simply say that those of us who are, uh, to some extent, involved politically in New York are extremely hopeful that our state will have the next majority leader of the United States Senate. And um, let me just uh, make a point or two about Senator Schumer. And I'm a, um, a relative latecomer to uh, the central focus of this gathering every year. I guess maybe 15, 18 years or so that I've been participating in this effort. And it does go, it goes back to Andy Athens who recruited me and so on. But I've heard several people say that after 40 years, it gets sometimes discouraging. Um, we, we get frustrated uh, with the passage of time and the lack of what we see as the necessary substantive changes that have to occur. Um, and it, it just occurred to me that if I, if, I, if I went to the dictionary and I went to the word perseverance, commitment, we never ever give up, I would find Chuck Schumer's picture in the dictionary as the embodiment of those characteristics and that unwavering commitment when he wants to get something done, ultimately it does get done. Now, this is a guy that showed up at 3% in the polls in 1998, and uh, the Democratic establishment in New York State had no idea what they were confronting. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, the rest is history, but uh, Chuck Schumer is a solid, reliable, committed friend of the Hellenic community and, and uh, uh, a longtime strong advocate for human rights, which is really what this is all about. So we're very proud of him in New York in a... The non-Greeks are proud, the Greeks are proud, and uh, we sometimes call him Schumeropolis, but not too often. Senator Schumer. Why don't we get uh, the people from New York to come up uh, and make this presentation to uh, uh, Chuck. So I just wanted to say that he was also the Grand Marshal of the Greek Parade uh, last year, and we were very proud of him. Yasuelas. Yasuelas. And Zito Kipros. Zito Kipros. Thank you very much. How do you say thank you? Paristo. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, and it's my honor to be here. Now, I always like to tell a story, but I don't know a Greek Jewish story. So I'll tell a Jewish-Irish story, because I received a nice award, uh, meaningful to me like this one is, from the Irish community in a similar way. And here is the story I told about that. They introduced Yogi Berra to a man named Sir Ben Briscoe. And they said, Yogi, this is Sir Ben Briscoe. He's the Lord High Mayor of Dublin. And in the 40, 400 years we've had Lord High Mayors of Dublin, Yogi, he's the first one who's Jewish. Yogi put his arm around his shoulder, looked him in the eye, and said, only in America. <laughs> anyway, but I am honored to receive this award because my relationship with the Greek community uh, here in New York and throughout America has always been long and close. I've had a kinship with the Greek community since I grew up a, th a few blocks from St. Uh, Three Hierarchs Church, and I knew the pastors there. Uh, Father Angelo and uh, Father Pappas and many of the pastors. And I played basketball at Madison High School. One of my close friends was Paul Nicolopoulos. So I went over to his house a lot and learned all about the Greek customs and the Greek pride and the, Greek, the great Hellenic traditions. So long before I got into politics, I was pro-Greek. And when I learned the history of Kiprot of Cyprus and of how uh, Greece and the Greek people were not uh, treated well by the Turks and others, and how they had been a beacon, not only of democracy for thousands of years, but of freedom for hundreds of years. In that corner of the world, of course, our relationship thickened. And I'm so proud of this community and so many of my good friends, uh, Peter and Phil and Andy and the whole gang who are here. Um, 
when I first ran for office, the Greek community in Three High Rocks Church rallied to my side. Many of you may remember Gus Velios, who was active in the community. He was a florist on Avenue J. And um, he was one of the leaders in getting me elected in that first assembly election. Dennis mentions the congressional, the Senate election, where Dennis and the Greek community were helpful to me. But back in that first assembly election, no one also thought I would win. I went into my local barber, Frankie, and said, would you put a poster in the window? He said, sure, kid. And then he said, kid, I've never told you this. I'm not only the local barber, I'm the local bookie. <laughs> and you're the 50 to 1 underdog. <laughs> but I won, and here I am. So I want to thank you all. Um, and you know, one of the things I'm proud of in New York is now we have many Greek uh, elected officials. I was the chairman of New York, New Yorkers for Dukakis uh, when we tried to have a Greek-American president. He was a fine man. I supported him um, in, in many instances and worked hard with so many of you. I remember raising all the money in the diners. Uh, was very successful, um, but unfortunately he lost. We have Mike Giannaris, who's my great friend, who's really one of the leaders in New York City politics. He was the first but now we have Greek city council members, assembly members from all the boroughs, Staten Island, Queens, and they are, like every one of the Greek people I've met, proud of your heritage, proud of the Greek heritage, which makes me very proud. And the Greek, Greek community has served America so well, so many leaders in so many ways, because the values, the Hellenic values that you've had for thousands of years combine so well with American values because we've taken our American values from Hellenic. Here's a story I like to tell. So in Northeast Queens, I march every year in the Memorial Day Parade. I did just a few weeks ago. And I'm marching, and someone comes over to me and says, there's someone who'd like to say hello to you. This was like in 2003, 2004. And there's a nice lady, has a Greek accent, she's uh, from Queens, sitting in a little chair, you know, one of those beach chairs with the weaving and she told me who she was. She was the mother of George Tenet, who was at that point the head of the CIA, who did, by the way, a great job at the CIA and took a lot of bullets for a whole lot of people. But we are safer today because of George's work. But what the great thing about this community, here was this humble lady sitting in the little chair in Northeast Queens, an immigrant, an immigrant from Greece, whose son became head of the CIA, one of the most important people in the world. Um, and again, it's in. I want you to know, Senator, that she's more proud of a cardiologist, son, because she's a doctor. Exactly. We have the same thing. <laughs> we have the same thing in the Jewish community. So I, I have tried to help in every way that I can. Um, in our immigration bill, I worked with many of the people in this room uh, to make sure that we would pass legislation to have uh, more people from Greece and Cyprus come to America. We offered a J visa program to allow Greek and Cypriot nationals to come to America because of the hardship that was over there. It was stymied in the House, it passed the Senate, but it will pass. And why do I work hard to increase Greek immigration to America? It is, of course, because I love the Greek community and I respect the culture, but I love New York and I love America. And the more Greeks there are in New York and the more Greeks there are in America, the better New York and America are. So that's why I believe in that uh, provision. I've been with you, Stalwart, uh, in trying to see some real freedom, a just and fair solution uh, to the issue of Cyprus. No outside power should come in. It should be the Cypriots themselves who have... Uh, uh, the determination of what happens there, not a strong outside power that muscles things around. And I think people now are seeing, since Erdogan, the leader of Turkey, <coughs> has been such a bully and not really a friend to the West, no, in so many portions of the world, I think we have a renewed opportunity. And I just sent a letter to Secretary Kerry regarding the repressive actions of the Erdogan regime uh, against journalists. So, but we got to keep the pressure and make sure that the negotiations continue. The Cypriots have their fair say, and I'm hopeful a solution can be found. So, I am watching this closely, but there is hope on the horizon, and that is great news. And as you say, Ti Kalanea. Did I say it right? Ti Kalanea. 
So thank you for the award. It means much more to me than so many other awards because I have such a strong love and affinity for your community. And I'll conclude by saying this. I, as a new leader of the Senate, I have to conduct a lunch at 1 o'clock with, with all of my colleagues. But I would say this. As long as I am senior senator, the relationship between the senior senator of New York and the Greek American community will be strong, powerful, and productive. Thank you very much. But I feel over the past 41 years that I've been uh, fighting for this cause, and all of us have been fighting, we have met some incredible people. And even though uh, most of you are frustrated and disappointed, we can say one thing. The individuals that we have met that had uh, people that can be identified for their integrity and for championing our, uh, our issues. And there's no one, no one that has put more effort uh, for our cause than Senator Bob Menendez. So uh, it's a uh, great privilege uh, that Das has let me do this, uh, Bob, uh, to introduce you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Senator Bob Menendez. Well, thank you, Philip, very much uh, for your gracious introduction and uh, above all for your friendship. And uh, Tassos let you do it because uh, he's dressed for spring, not for official. Uh, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Only the people I love do I pick on. So uh, in any event, uh, let me uh, say it is uh, great to be with the conference uh, again uh, over these many years, my 23rd. Uh, I appreciate uh, so many of you uh, that I have created relationships with over time. Uh, certainly uh, the work that Andy and Mike Manitos do here, uh, my dear friend Philip Christopher and what he's done, Peter Panicolau, who's done such a fantastic job. People who uh, we miss, like Andy Athens, uh, as well as uh, my uh, friend who I pick on, Tasso Sambas. Uh, Andy Zemanidis. Uh, I saw that his name is now Dr. Cristadulo, so congratulations on getting your PhD uh, after a long time. Uh, certainly, I don't know if the ambassador is still here, but uh, we appreciate uh, the Cypriot ambassador's work on behalf of the relationship between our two countries. Um, and uh, to uh, all of our friends uh, in the community. Look, uh, I know that uh, four plus decades is too long. It was too long when it was a year of invasion and occupation. It is certainly way too long after four plus decades. But I also think that uh, it is only because of the engagement of the community uh, here in America and elsewhere that Cyprus is poised for some tremendous opportunities. Uh, its, its success as part of the European Union, incredibly important. Its ability to weather financial storms, incredibly important. Its security, more secure as a result uh, of the reality of your engagement. Uh, so in the midst of still seeing the pain of division, uh, the reality is, is I want you to know that it's your engagement that has brought us to a moment in which I hope that we can see uh, some real progress towards our mutual goal of a reunited country of a bizonal, bicommunal federation in which Greek and Turkish Cypriots can live side by side as they once did. Uh, now, uh, I uh, do have a problem for those who don't recognize history, uh, and uh, I reject the view that even as we are trying to have a negotiation that uh, those who say that this is not a problem of invasion and occupation, it is clearly and was uh, an invasion and an occupation. And to deny history is uh, destined uh, to live with uh, the challenges of ignoring it. Uh, so that's why I came out so strongly when I read the statements about the United States ambassador. I don't know in what context he meant it, but in any context it's not acceptable, particularly in the midst of the negotiations that are taking place. I'm hopeful uh, that we can see progress. There is a new Turkish Cypriot leader. 
Uh, but the reality is, is this has always been about Turkey at the end of the day. If you send people from Anatolia to settle uh, in the occupied area, uh, if you are unwilling to create the ability uh, to have Turkish and Greek Cypriots side by side solve uh, whatever differences there may be again uh, between them, which they have always, in my view, left alone, uh, can achieve the goals uh, of the reunification we want to see. But you can't do that when you send uh, your ships uh, into uh, Cyprus's exclusive economic zone, which is why I went to the floor of the United States Senate and spoke against Turkey when the Barbaros was in the mists, accompanied by warships, into Cyprus's economic zone, which is why I called Vice President Biden uh, as this was happening and his engagement with Turkey to say to him, this is not sustainable and clearly a blow to any potential negotiations. Uh, it is why um, I have raised uh, this issue when Ban Ki-moon uh, came to visit us uh, at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee uh, about uh, what was happening to a member of the European Union. Because, I don't know, some people lose sight that Cyprus is a member of the European Union and is expected to be treated in all respects like a member of the European Union. Uh, and to have its territorial sovereignty uh, recognized. Um, now, the election uh, in uh, the occupied area is only uh, one opportunity, but that opportunity really is going to be driven by how we, in my view, how we uh, actually direct uh, our advocacy uh, with Turkey to allow uh, Cypriots to make their own decision. I was concerned when Turkey backed off of their past zero problems with neighbors policy and already have a more confrontational policy with respect to Cyprus and Israel uh, that threaten U.S. interests and stability in the region. Those concerns are still valid today. On May 9th, Turkey's Under Secretariat of Defense Industries and the Turkish shipyard Sedef Shipbuilding signed a contract to build Turkey's first landing platform dock by 2021, a move that can disrupt the security balance of the Eastern Mediterranean. Needless to say, that's an alarming development for Israel, Greece, and Cyprus. On May 25th, President Erdogan addressed the Sixth World Forum on Energy Regulation in Istanbul where he said, quote, it is not possible for us to make any concessions on our policy regarding the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, what he calls the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, and the island's energy resources. He also said that Turkey was a key country for utilizing and delivering the resources off the island, which he added belonged to each resident. The bottom line is that when you listen to that and so much more, the positions that Turkey has taken have not only undermined the U.S. and U.N. efforts to achieve a final resolution to the Cyprus question, but on the contrary, has raised the possibility of an expanded conflict in the region. And in my view, uh, while there is, I think, legitimate efforts going on, uh, certainly forward-leaning by the government of Cyprus in these negotiations. When you see all of this background with Turkey, this is where there is an obligation, from my perspective, for the United States to speak strongly to its NATO partner and say, you cannot take these positions and expect uh, us to ultimately work with you in common cause when, in fact, uh, you are undermining the security of the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, and I am going to continue to push, as a senior member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the State Department in witnesses in public and in private uh, to challenge them. I know they, they asked Greece to uh, consider uh, not having a certain pipeline for energy because they don't want to see that one happen, but they won't tell Turkey. Uh, where it emanates, has to emanate out of, that they should in fact not consider that pipeline. There is a fundamental disconnect here uh, between uh, even our national interest and in security as a country with where, how we engage Turkey and, uh, and how we deal with it. Now, in the midst of that, I, I see also tremendous opportunity, and this is one of the areas that I would use uh, significantly, the exclusive economic zone, 
the opportunity for the combination between Israel, Egypt, uh, and Cyprus and Greece uh, to change the dynamics of energy opportunity uh, in the Mediterranean and in Europe, especially in the midst of the challenges that Europe has awoken to, to understand that their energy is largely, they are largely uh, committed to one country, and that's never good, no matter who that country is. You need diversity in your energy supplies, and you can't be held hostage. I think there's a tremendous opportunity uh, for Cyprus as part of that coalition in the exclusive economic zone to develop and use the energy not only for the benefit of its people, but to use the energy as a leverage of greater uh, advocacy throughout Europe uh, and in the United States uh, for our ultimate goal. Uh, and so uh, as we speak to uh, my colleagues here, I hope that, of course, in addition to what is righteous uh, and what is wrong with invasion and occupation, that we also think strategically about that energy lever as a real opportunity to get people to think differently, as well as reminding them what a good ally Cyprus has been to us in critical moments when we had to uh, get people out of conflicts uh, and find a place of refuge, Cyprus offered it when they've worked with us on money laundering and other key issues that we've concerned about. Their sharing of intelligence, an incredibly important part of the world. Uh, we need uh, everybody to understand that that is the Cypriot reality, that they have been a good ally of the United States, and they can be an incredibly powerful partner with us as this new energy paradigm unfolds. And that creates an opportunity for rethinking here in the United States Senate and in the Congress, and that's certainly what I'm going to be pursuing. As I have said many times, and as I said to Philip last night uh, and my friends, uh, 41 years is a long time, and it is painful. And as our distinguished representative of Cypriots abroad on behalf of the Cypriot government knows, but uh, throughout the diaspora. But the bottom line is we are going to get to the promised land. We are going to get there together, and I will not rest uh, for so long as I am in the United States Senate until the last boot of the last Turkish soldier leaves northern Cyprus, until we see a reunification, and until we have peace and justice with security at the end of the day. Thank you very much for having me. One of the reasons why we come, those of you that remember, he was a young man when uh, we first met. We have to make sure not only uh, uh, that we elect him, and he's our next senator from uh, the state of Maryland. So I make sure we support our good friend, Chris. Thank you, Phil. Uh, thank you very much. Well, it is great to be with uh, all of you uh, this morning as we gather here. So thank you to uh, Andy and Mike Manitos and the entire Manitos uh, team uh, for constantly bringing us together uh, to focus on important issues uh, to the Hellenic uh, community. And uh, to uh, Phil Christopher and so many other friends in the room uh, who also have maintained our, our focus. And in the Washington area, uh, many of you know, we just uh, saw a great tragedy uh, in the Greek American community uh, with the awful, horrible uh, killings of some uh, good friends of many of uh, ours, uh, Savas and Amy Savopoulos and their son. Uh, it was it was um, it was good to see the Greek American community come together the other day at Saint Sophia uh, and provide the family with the uh, support they need at this very difficult time. And uh, I first met the father, uh, Phil Savopoulos, when we were working uh, to build the. Uh, American Hellenic Academy uh, out in uh, the Bethesda, Potomac area of Maryland uh, because our kids, uh, my wife's Greek American, Catherine, and all our kids were baptized in the Greek Orthodox Church and we, like Phil Savopoulos, uh, actually wanted to have a school uh, where they could go to begin to learn Greek. And that's where we first met Phil uh, and Gail uh, many years ago. And so this is a family that's been committed uh, to the Hellenic cause, and it was a great tragedy uh, to see what happened, and we all need to work together 
uh, to support the family. Uh, let, me, let me just uh, pick up on what uh, Andy and Phil said with respect to uh, our work together uh, on important issues. And we all know that last year marked the 40th anniversary uh, of the Division of Cyprus. And we're gathered here actually at a moment of opportunity. And I, I know we say we've seen opportunities before. In fact, I remember when I was working for Senator Pell, uh, after the election of President Basilio, this dates me as well, uh, we thought that there were some new opportunities uh, to bring uh, the island uh, together. Uh, and in the past, those, those opportunities have, have melted away because we've never, ever gotten the cooperation of the Turkish government uh, when it comes to trying to bring uh, peace uh, and unity uh, to Cyprus. So now, as you know, and I understand there were some briefings this morning, um, but as everybody in the room knows, there, there is an opening here because of the election of the new Turkish Cypriot leader, which surprised the Turks. Right. The president of Cyprus is willing uh, to engage in, in dialogue. And there's a meeting in September uh, with the UN Secretary General. I, I don't know if it's actually been set, but uh, it's expected to take place in September when, when the United Nations uh, convenes. So really for the first time in a long time there may be some ingredients here again uh, the question is whether or not uh, Turkey uh, will be an obstacle we know that last year uh, they engaged in these uh, reckless incursions uh, into the uh, exclusive economic zone of Cyprus uh, and essentially disrupted any possibility of re-engaging in the talks at that time uh, we, we, we here in the Congress uh, and the administration push back hard against that, uh, and uh, the good news is the Turks then, uh, you know, ended their aggressive tactics, at least for that moment, uh, within the uh, economic zone. So let's see where we go uh, here. As many of you know, the Turkish elections are this weekend, and uh, Erdogan, uh, has been attempting, as you know, to continue to consolidate power uh, in the presidency uh, and essentially take for himself in a very arrogant fashion uh, more and more power. And the question will be uh, whether some of the smaller parties, especially the Kurdish party, whether they can muster more than 10 percent of the vote uh, in the parliament in order to put together a coalition that would block this huge power grab by Erdogan. So, but I, I do think it's a great moment of opportunity and look forward to working with all of you to try to maximize any potential uh, that is there in terms of putting pressure on the Turks. Uh, they will continue to insist on being a guarantor and the, th th there's no reason <laughs> for the Turks to be a guarantor of an agreement in Cyprus. Uh, there's no reason for Turkish troops to be in Cyprus. And so for the first time in a long time, it appears we have a Turkish Cypriot leader that may agree with us. And then the question is, how do we make sure the Turks don't once again prevent uh, an agreement uh, from coming forward? And so let's, let's work together uh, to get that done. On the economic front in Greece, we know we're also um, at a critical moment. Uh, and many of us have been uh, working with Secretary Liu to encourage uh, the Europeans and the IMF to be flexible in their approach uh, to Greece because Greece has embarked on a difficult uh, effort uh, to try to you know, restore economic growth. And the last thing we need uh, is uh, continued disruption in the economy. So a lot of us believe the United States should continue to press our European partners to make sure that uh, we can uh, manage this economic challenge uh, in a way that doesn't harm the people of Greece. Uh, and I look forward to continuing to work with all of you on, on these really important issues. We're, we're, we're here at a moment where both the question of the future of Cyprus and the possibility of settlement, as well as the economic situation in Greece, are at, a, at, a, at, a, at critical moments. And uh, it's important that we all continue to, to work together uh, as one. Let me, let me just um, also um, mention the, uh, the school at Halki, which is a continuing issue uh, for all of us. We've been trying for years and years 
uh, to get the cooperation of, of Turkey on that, and I, I don't want it to be forgotten uh, in terms of our ongoing efforts, and we'll continue to press along with those of you in the room on, on that important issue. When I was served on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, I uh, traveled um, to Cyprus and spent quite a lot of time there and talking to lots of people in the community. And uh, it was, as I mentioned, right after the election of President Basilio, where there was also uh, heightened hope. Uh, and, you know, I, I came back and wrote a report in new opportunities for U.S. policy in the Eastern Mediterranean. But the conclusion of the report was exactly what you just said, uh, that any success in Cyprus runs through Ankara, runs through Turkey. And the, the question, you know, if it's, the, it's the right question and there is no easy answer with respect to uh, pressure on Turkey. I've been, I've been disappointed in the lack of pressure on Turkey on Cyprus as well as the lack of pressure on Turkey with respect to the situation with ISIL. I mean, if you look at the situation uh, in Syria and ISIL, most of those fighters originally were given essentially safe passage through Turkey. I mean, Turkey at, be at best turned a blind eye to ISIS and in, in, in many reports actually helped facilitate the creation of ISIS. And Erdogan, as all of you know, uh, has become essentially a megalomaniac. He is... Uh, and that's why I raised the question of uh, the elections. The other players here, of course, are the Europeans, and they can also uh, play a role uh, in putting pressure uh, on, on Turkey. And the UN Secretary General and the international community, if it's, if it's clear, if it's clear that the President of Cyprus and the new Turkish Cypriot leader themselves want a solution, then it's incumbent on the international community to come together and put pressure on Turkey here. And so that meeting in September I think is going to be important because if the UN Secretary General uh, comes out and uh, you know says we have two leaders here, the President of Cyprus and the leader of the Turkish Cypriot uh, community who, who want to get a settlement, then we can work together as part of the international community to try and put pressure on Turkey to get it done. That, there's no easily satisfying answer with respect to one thing we can do uh, with leverage on Turkey. This is, this is why it's important uh, to you know, maintain at least a, a group of members of Congress who are alert and vigilant on these issues and uh, people who understand uh, what's going on and, and the continued record of Turkey's violations um, uh, in, in the region. And, you know, we, we as you're right, the, the administration did not make a strong statement, uh, which, is why, which is why a group of us, uh, in, you know, including Steve, called upon the administration to take action. And, and you know, in the end, uh, you know, we obviously succeed in getting the Turks to leave, but we'll only be successful if the lesson is learned that they don't do it again. What we're going to need to do is, you know, build the strength of numbers <laughs> in Congress that can help put more pressure on any administration, whether it's a Democratic or Republican administration. Because, uh, again, the ISIS situation, in fact, highlights, I think, for everybody uh, the sort of... Uh, counter totally uh, a Turkish policy that runs directly contrary to our interests exactly. in, in the region. Yeah. Going all right. I'm going to have to thank you all very much. I just wanted to make a point on how important it is for everybody to be coming here over these years because uh, this, uh, our next speaker is an example. He was a, uh, a, a, like Chris Van Hollen, he also was on a staff on Capitol Hill and we're just talking about uh, Congressman Bob Mrazek who he's talking with this morning. And many of you will remember Bob, but some of you who have not been involved that long may not be aware. Because of the Cyprus issue, Turkey's aid from the United States changed dramatically. The U.S. was sending $1 billion a year in aid to Turkey, and when Mrazek was on the Appropriations Committee and, and uh, David uh, Obi was uh, subcommittee chairman, we brought that aid to Turkey from $1 billion a year over about four years down to zero. And 
this is another way the Congress expressed itself to this administration and to Turkey that it was time to get off Cyprus. It did not succeed, but it is these kinds of things that we just must continue to do in order to make any progress, the progress we have made. Yesterday we met with the uh, Amanda Slaud, which is the Deputy Secretary of State. We told her the issues. Uh, we've been telling her the issues. Senator Menendez has been an outspoken supporter in the Senate side. We have had uh, letters from the uh, various congressmen. But yeah, for 41 years we have not been able to change this perception that Turkey, the reliable ally, uh, is needed and cannot do any wrong. Uh, recently, of course, we've seen the relations between Israel and Turkey have uh, deteriorated. Uh, Turkey has played a very bad role in regards to Iran, uh, in regards to helping our troops, in regards to ISIL. But uh, bottom line is, unless there is pressure, those 43,000 troops on the island that, uh, will remain and uh, 200,000 people that have been evicted from their homes, including uh, my family and many other people that are here that uh, their families got evicted, will never have a chance to go back home. So we're honoring uh, Congressman Steve Israel. So Congressman Steve Israel, a leader whose work exemplifies today the great governmental ideals of Greece and the United States of America, and whose efforts have been invaluable to the important and historic relationship between the great nations of Greece and the United States. So this one is more uh, from uh, an overall Hel Hellenic values ideal. So this uh, award has below it two vials of soil, and it says, from this hallowed earth have come the world's greatest minds, ideas, and actions. Soil taken from the location in Athens, Greece, where democracy was born, and soil taken from the location in the United States capital, seat of the world's greatest democracy. Here, Mr. Ambassador, why don't you hand this to you? Thank you very much. Where's Chris? Take one picture and then. This is for the politicians. Uh, I, I'm going to be very, very brief. Uh, first, I'm going to apologize. I can't stay. I'm on the Appropriations Committee, and our bills are on the floor today. Uh, and so I've got to get to the floor. We have our last votes in just a, just a little while, uh, and then we go back home. Uh, so I have to be on the floor. Uh, I will say that. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate Phil Christopher. Any success that I've had in life is, is due to one thing, and that is just doing what Phil Christopher tells me to do. Uh, and it's worked out pretty well, uh, which is why I'm so honored to uh, receive this award. Let me make two points, one a point of policy and one a point of principle. Uh, well, actually, make three points. Politics, policy, principle. Politics. If you really want to make progress on the issues that we share, the values that we fight for every day, if you really want to make sure that we are influencing an administration that, in my view, has been moving too slowly on our values, there's one thing that we can do together, and that is elect Chris Van Hollen to the United States Senate. So I hope you don't mind me saying that. It would be nice to have a fighter like Chris in the Senate, and I'll keep the fight up in the House of Representatives. I just hope that he talks to me once he goes to the Senate. You know, that tends to happen. These senators, they go to the other side of the building, and they just, you know, they don't, they forget our, our, my phone number is, is, is what happened. That will never happen with Chris Van Hoff. Chris and I share uh, so many values, uh, and uh, we share some wounds. Uh, Chris chaired the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee for four years. I chaired it for four years, so when you chair, you also share, and uh, so we've shared some, some uh, good times and, uh, and uh, some challenging times. Okay, that was the politics. Policy. Uh, I do a lot of work on national security and, and foreign policy. I would say, uh, if asked to list the most profound disappointments in the world, in preserving peace and stability and prosperity, uh, I would have to put at the top of that list uh, Erdogan. One of the most profound disappointments and one of the biggest sources of frustration for me and many others. He had a choice to be a conciliator, a peace builder, a conflict resolver, uh, and he chose to, do, to go in the opposite direction. And that's his, you know, he, he had that choice. He chose to go in the opposite direction, which in my view means that we should choose 
not to align ourselves with him to the extent that we have. If he chooses to go there, we don't have to go there with him. And I'll continue to fight every single day in the House of Representatives for a different kind of policy towards Turkey that rewards good behavior, but does not reward bad behavior. So that's my policy. Thank you. Now, principle. Here's why this uh, honor is so meaningful to me and why I'm going to hang it uh, on, uh, on the walls of my office upstairs. I'm not Greek, I'm not Cypriot. Uh, despite Phil's presence, uh, I don't have a large population of Greeks and Cypriots in my district. It's actually very small, very small. And yet I, I devote myself to this issue, not just because Phil won't leave me alone, <laughs> but because of an essential principle. I may not be Greek, I may not be Cypriot, but I am the son, and Phil has heard me tell this story, I am the son of two grandparents whose photographs hang on the wall of my office upstairs on the fourth floor of this building. And I look at those photographs before every difficult vote. My two grandparents had to flee their homeland in Russia, Myron Kuznitsky and Ray Volovitz. They fled because their properties were stolen from them, because their villages were occupied, because they had to endure persecution and prosecution and hunger and poverty and anti-Semitism. They fled because of who they were and what they believed. That's why they fled their homeland. I hang their pictures on, on the wall at the, uh, upstairs uh, in, in this building for a very simple reason. Because it reminds me every day of what my obligation is to them. When they came here, I look at those pictures, they were taken very early after they came here. They're on their immigration documents. So I have their original immigration documents framed on, on my walls. And their pictures are on those documents. And when I look at those pictures, I see uh, eyes filled with fear. The fear that they had just experienced in Russia the expropriation of their, uh, of their homes and their lands. But I also see eyes filled with hope and promise at the opportunity that this country gave them. I do not believe that when those pictures were taken, my grandparents ever would have thought they'd be hanging on a wall in the United States Capitol, placed there by a grandson with the title congressman, who would come on a morning like this to receive an honor like the one that you have bestowed upon me. I don't think they ever would have thought that was possible. But I believe that if they thought it was possible anywhere on earth, it would be only be possible in this country, only in the United States of America. So not on behalf of me, and not on behalf of Chris, and not on behalf of my colleagues in the United States Congress, but on behalf of Myron Kuznitsky and Ray Volovitz, I want to thank you for giving me this award, which honors the fight that they have entrusted to me. Thank you all very much and God bless you. Thank you. Our next speaker is a member of Congress who uh, I think was brought to this conference a couple years ago by uh, Dennis Neal. And anytime Dennis brings us someone, we know he's a good friend and someone who's, uh, who's going to be helpful. And he has been since he's been here. So a member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. Uh, listen, I just wanted to stop by and say good morning to all of you and thank you for uh, your support of these, uh, these important issues and keeping them um, front and center in, in, in the work we do here in Congress. I will tell you, I just came back from a week in Turkey uh, where uh, we had an opportunity to spend time with senior government officials, including the foreign ministers and others, and I will tell you that the U.S.-Turkey relationship right now is at a really critical stage, and, and what we see in the development of more authoritarian moves by the Erdogan regime and and their partnership or lack of it in our efforts against Cyprus, uh, excuse me, against uh, ISIS, really has implications for the issues that I know this room cares about a lot. And the reason is because uh, there are so many issues that are of importance to Turkey right now that we need to make sure that we make very clear that we have some priorities of our own. And and front and center is a just resolution to the issues. Uh, on the island of Cyprus. And, and those of us in the Hellenic Caucus and those of us who have been on the forefront of this for years um, are going to keep those issues front and center as we, as we work through these issues uh, with the Turks. I think we are seeing right now with the Turkish elections uh, this week, uh, 
uh, a very critical moment in U.S.-Turkey relations, and it, it provides opportunities for us um, to open up lots of issues that have been stalled for a long time, and, and some of us are determined not to miss those opportunities. So I want to let you know that these issues were very much on our mind as we, as we walk through the other issues that are getting more attention maybe in the press uh, because of the conflict in Syria, because of the, the role the Turks are playing in that. Um, but there is so much opportunity as well. There's so much opportunity in, in the area of energy exploration, in the area of uh, cooperation with the United States, and so, mu uh, so many other areas, that we should have a positive agenda going forward. And those of us who are um, sensitive to the issues in Northern Ireland and in, uh, uh, and in the dynamic there understand well how urgent it is when somebody's sitting in uh, you know, your ancestral homeland who, sh who, who, ha who, who has no business being there. And I want to let you know that I feel these issues very personally and I understand them um, because I grew up listening to, uh, to a lot of family members who felt them very strongly uh, for very similar reasons. Um, so thank you for the work you do. I want to thank my friend Dennis Meal, who has always been such a support and a help to me in the Congress. And uh, who's here from New York? We must have some New Yorkers here, right? All right. Well, well, as you know, I love you all, but I love them more. And uh, <laughs> uh, but I hope you have a wonderful. I uh, hope you have a wonderful set of meetings here. I hope you have a lot of members of Congress coming through. And if there's ever anything uh, I or my staff can do for you, my chief of staff Tim Persco is here. Please feel free to give us your information. Come by and see us. Uh, we work for you. We are here to be responsive to you uh, and keep fighting and keep the faith. Thank you so much. Have a good especially on the issue of Cyprus. Uh, I know you've been lobbying. I've been told, coming up here now for 41 years, uh, trying to get uh, the Turkish troops out of Cyprus. I certainly support you on that and uh, want to be a voice. Um, I also have to say that the Greek community in Massachusetts uh, is probably responsible for me actually coming to Congress. My candidacy uh, was, uh, was born um, in the back room of a, uh, of a pizza parlor run by the Singus family in, in Massachusetts, and they believed in me, and we had meetings every week uh, for several months trying to convince me to, to do this, and I thought, what a crazy idea, I couldn't win. Uh, but I did it, and lightning struck, and here I am. But, uh, but look, I, I, I co-chair the Human Rights Commission, um, the Tom Landers Human Rights Commission. I see Catherine Porter is here, uh, who is one of the founders of the, of the commission. But uh, these issues um, are really human rights issues uh, and self-determination issues. And um, I'd like to think if the United States stands for anything, we ought to stand out loud in four square for human rights. So I'm happy to be here. I appreciate you, uh, you coming to Washington. And anything we can do to be a little bit of wind at your back, I'm happy to be there for you. So thank you very much. Congressman, if I, if I might just mention to you for just a moment, since you brought up the human rights issue, uh, on the island of Cyprus, when the invasion occurred, over 1,500 people were captured alive, including five Americans. They were, we, we thought, for 10 years, we could not find out what happened to them. Our government wouldn't push Turkey to find out. We finally had to pass a law through the House and Senate to force our government to examine it. And what they found is that all those people were executed and in mass graves. Now, they did find one American, and they did return other Greek Cypriots. Our problem here now, and here's where you could be very helpful, is that Turkey is not allowing the remains of these people to be returned to their families. They're claiming, oh, this is a military area, so this third party, it's not Greek Cypriots, a third party cannot come in here and dig the remains up. It's, a, it's as humanitarian an issue as I can imagine, and your help on this would be appreciated. So maybe, maybe we, what we could do is the Human Rights Commission can work with you to kind of make, draft an appeal to the Turkish government, Beautiful. asking them to, to cooperate. Thank, to you. Do it. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I've got to next introduce somebody who needs no introduction to this group, but let me point out to you that she is the highest ranking Democrat on the Appropriations Committee. This is a very powerful committee in the Congress, Nita Lowy of New York. No, it, it's, it's really a pleasure for me to be here today. And I've actually been at so many meetings that the Manitos team has put together. And your alliance with the American Jewish Committee has really built on the friendship and all the good work that you have done. And you and I know how really destructive Turkey has been 
in that region of the world, and it's really getting more so, which is of great concern to me. And not only am I the ranking member of the whole committee, but I've been ranking member of Foreign Ops for a very, very long time. And um, at this point, I'm not even cordial. And I, I really have made a pledge. I said to Phil Christopher, who just stopped and walked out, that I don't know how many more years, but I, I've been saying that I can't leave the Congress, Dennis, until Phil and Peter and Nico and all my friends here go back to their homeland in Cyprus. It is time. Uh, I've been there many times, and uh, it, it is absolutely unreasonable that we can't resolve this. And I know there have been intense negotiations several times during my time in the Congress, and it's not that complicated. Um, so I just want to assure you that the allegiance between so many members of Congress and those of you who are looking to see this resolved and get back to your homeland is very, very strong. And I also think because of the friendship between Greece and the United States, we have a real responsibility, and I hope Dennis is working on it, to resolve the economic difficulties that are going on currently in Greece. It's, it's so unfortunate, and I'm hoping as a strong ally, we can be constructive and continue to be helpful. Phil went out to just make sure everything's okay, right, Phil? <laughs> well, I just said nice things about you, Phil, and it is uh, a real honor for me to be here, and I look for, ah, nice to see you. I look forward next year for us to talk about the resolution of the challenges that we've been facing together for all these years. So thank you for coming. Thank you for your strong will. You never give up, and we won't give up, and the alliance will only continue to strengthen. Thank you very much. We have as our next speaker the individual who is the highest ranking Democrat on the Europe subcommittee of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, so he's very crucial to Cyprus and our issues from New York, Congressman Gregory Meeks. Thank you, Andy. I'm delighted uh, to be here this morning and delighted to see all of you. And as Andy indicated, being the ranking Democrat on uh, the European Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs, I know how critical and how important Cyprus is, especially after coming out of some difficult economic times, but it is many of the individuals in this room and the people of Cyprus coming together that shows that the strength and the hope of a better tomorrow will happen. And the strength of the EU, because of Cyprus and its focus and its people and its togetherness, will make sure that that example will lead others to follow so that we can collectively stay together to deal with all of the issues that we have to deal with in the region. And so I'm proud, and as I see some of my colleagues walk in the door, especially the chairman of the committee, to say that the United States and Cyprus, our relationship and our friendship, and to make sure that we stand by the people, to make sure that that hope and that continuation and bringing finally the kind of unity that the people of Cyprus have always wanted, that that indeed happens sooner rather than later. That is what this is all about. That's what our friendship is all about. I enjoyed tremendously when I had the opportunity to visit not too long ago. And I look forward to going back again and making sure that you know that my doors are always open so that we can sit down, have conversations, strategize, talk, and work together so that we can make sure that tomorrow is indeed much better for the people of Cyprus, for the people in the region, for the EU, and for the United States, that it is much better tomorrow than today or yesterday. Collectively and together, we can get there. Let me conclude just by saying, because I 
would be remiss. You know, oftentimes when I speak to NC Andy, you know, they know that for me, <clears throat> within your community, I have a long standing and deep and abiding uh, person who sits on this shoulder. So you could be assured that he will make sure that I'm doing the right thing because if I don't, this guy here, Dennis Mill, my good buddy, <laughs> who is uh, an individual that I know all of y'all know this, but I have to give him a shout out because you're talking about an advocate, one that's dedicated, and who puts his actions, you know, he just doesn't talk things, but he put actions behind his words. Uh, we are proud, and I'm pleased to say that Dennis Meal is my good friend. I look forward to continuing to work with each and every one of you to make sure that tomorrow is better. Thank you. God bless. He is one of the 34 members of the House who co-sponsored a resolution recently uh, calling for a Cypress settlement. We'd like to present to him today what we call the Barbed Wire Award, and it is for his efforts which are beginning to remove this barbed wire which has divided the nation of Cyprus for over 41 years. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being uh, that, that, that voice uh, for those who are suffering a 40-year occupation uh, uh, that is illegal and continues to be a, an outright human rights abuse of the highest order. Uh, and, uh, you know, well over 500 churches and, and houses of worship that have, been, that have been desecrated, some turned into casinos, some, uh, th this is a desecration, and I am a very strong believer in, in Jesus Christ, and to see that kind of, 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 of desecration of a house of worship, of a, of a church, uh, or of a seminary, or, or whatever, uh, is just beyond the pale. There is reason for some hope. You know, we all know that it looked like in a, in a parallel type of, of intractable problem in Northern Ireland when, when the Catholics and the Protestants couldn't come together, and then all of a sudden a peace broke out, and a reconciliation broke out. Uh, maybe the peace talks will yield some fruit. I think some of the meetings most recently uh, give some hope. Uh, we shouldn't get euphoric about it, but there is some reason uh, for optimism. And we need to do our part to ensure uh, that this illegal occupation ends and it ends soon. You know, a couple of weeks ago, on the anniversary of the 100th anniversary uh, of the, of the um, uh, Armenian Genocide, I held my second hearing on that terrible, terrible genocide that Hitler said, who remembers the Armenians? And I am amazed that to this day, the Turks in Ankara are still in absolute denial, and it's not just denial, it's an aggressive effort uh, to rewrite history and to put a gloss over a terrible uh, bloodletting. I remember reading Morgan Thor, our ambassador at the, Times, uh, at the time, uh, who wrote a contemporaneous history of what was happening. Uh, he was our ambassador, the U.S. ambassador uh, uh, to Turkey. And, and it couldn't be clear uh, that a genocide occurred, and 100 years later, they're still in, in denial. Uh, we need to take Ankara to task uh, for its human rights abuses against its own people, its journalists, obviously the Armenians, the Nagorno-Karabakh problem, and of course its ongoing animosity towards Greece and what is happening uh, in Cyprus uh, and that illegal occupation that must end and it must end now. Thank you again for your leadership. It makes all the difference in the world.